Capacitors and resistors. There's not a ton that you need to know about these as far as deep analysis of what's going on with them, but it's important to understand the basic principles behind how they operate. We've already covered how resistors generate power and capacitors store energy. And the next thing is to realize how changing the surface area and changing the length influences the ability of it to store energy or to generate power. So the capacitance, which is measured in farads, is the product of the permittivity times the surface area over the distance between the two plates of the capacitor. And the resistance formula is equal to the resistivity, which is represented here by rho, uh, times the length over the area. And so notice that if you increase the surface area of a capacitor, you're increasing its capacitance and its ability to store charge. But if you increase the surface area of a resistor, then you're actually reducing its ability to do that. One mnemonic that a student taught me that I think has been very useful is uh, a way to remember the resistivity formula. He said that it's the resistance in China was led by the People's Liberation Army. And I think that's a very useful way of just remembering which one cares about length and which one is hindered by increasing the length. As soon as you understand that increasing the length of a resistor increases its resistivity, then it makes it a lot easier to derive all of these formulas if you'd prefer not to memorize them. And if you already have these things committed to memory, then it can be useful to consider uh, what these exactly mean. And so imagine that if you were current flowing through a circuit and you saw two resistors in series, it essentially looks like a longer resistor with no change in surface area. It becomes something with a greater length and with no change in area whatsoever. And so what you see is an increase in the resistance. Whereas if you're the current moving through and you see these two resistors here, then you can see double uh, the surface area, but no change in the length whatsoever. And then that makes it very straightforward to realize that if resistors are in series, you're increasing the length without changing the area at all. And so what you're gonna see is these numbers are gonna add up. If you have resistors in parallel, then um, what's happening is it looks like uh, no change in the length, but an increase in area, which will reduce the overall resistance. And so you're gonna see one over the equivalent resistance is equal to these things. And, and uh, as you do more of these problems, you'll recognize that if you keep adding the reciprocals of these numbers, you're gonna end up with a smaller overall equivalent resistance. Capacitors follow the opposite rules. When you have capacitors in series, you're increasing the length between the plates, and that is problematic because it reduces the overall capacitance. But capacitors in parallel add together because you're increasing the surface area of those capacitor plates. And you know that increasing area um, with no change in length is going to increase the ability of that capacitor to store charge. And so the more you can see uh, series and parallel set up in this way and realize that what's going on really is it looks like a longer resistor or capacitor versus one with a greater surface area, then all of these components should all fit together. And you can, from any one of these pieces, derive all the other parts. You can derive the capacitance and resistance formulas using permittivity and resistivity, and you can also figure out what happens when you put them in series or in parallel. And I think if you grasp this concept, then a lot more of that becomes straightforward and everything else should follow.